Good morning, CC Naz family. Guess what? I'm actually going to be joining you online today, but I decided before I leave, I would go ahead and do some announcements. We try something, yes, as Pastor Barb says, new. So I just wanted to welcome everyone who is actually here in the sanctuary this morning, even though I'm not, and plead with you to fill out your blue Connect card. So if you're brand new here today, that would be a great opportunity for us to get to know you a little better. But if you're one that comes every Sunday faithfully, if you could just put your name on there, drop that in the blessing box on the back on your way out, that would be wonderful. So I know who I got to miss today. So we are busy retreating, but we will be back later this afternoon. Thank you for allowing us this opportunity to be on retreat. But I have not left the church behind. We have several sign-up sheets that I not only want to bring your attention to, but I want to encourage you to visit the Connect Board to sign up for. The first one is the Heart and Soul Tour that is going on across our district. Our area will be invited to Cross Point Church in Lutz on October 8th, beginning at 6 p.m. We will be going as a group and uh, so there's a sign-up sheet just so we can let them know how many that we will be bringing. Also, Miss Mary wants to make sure you have heard about the mission service on October 13th. There will be pizza again at 6 o'clock for those who bother to sign up on the sign-up sheet. If not, show up at 7 o'clock for the mission service. You won't want to miss it. The Armstrongs have great things going on there where they're serving, and we want to hear and support them as much as possible. The last announcement I wanted to bring to your attention and only so you can get the very, very best spot is the Sweet Treat Street that we will be holding on October 29th. We've already talked to some families in the community. They are excited about it. There's a little twist this year. I've been giving you a little heads up. Everybody this year who participates and decorates, there is some sort of, of Christian or Bible or Jesus theme you'll see on the bulletin board or the connect board out there to sign up. There are some themes already there. Pick one of those themes, sign up for that, decorate your car according to that, come out, support the community. It's gonna be a great time. We're look, really looking forward to it. I did leave five slots for those of you who are very creative. Some of you have already said, what about this? What about this? Remember, as long as it's Bible themed, Christian themed or Jesus themed, We'll let you do it. So if you have any questions, feel free to call the office next week. I'd be happy to talk to you. If not, we'll just assume that sign-up sheet is filled by the time I get back. That would be wonderful. You have a great rest of the day in worship, and I'll see you soon. All right. Well, I know she said that was the last announcement, but I have two for you now. That um, One that we just want to make sure we get out to you so we have plenty of time to plan, and that's our church picnic. Uh, that will be out at Cruz Lake Park on November 4th with the trains. Bob and his friends are going to be running the trains. We're going to have lots of food out there. We want you to invite your family and friends. That's November 4th. Lots of things for the kids. Um, and uh, we're asking that maybe you guys can donate towards the food. Judy and myself have come up with a wonderful plan where nobody has to slave over the grill um, or cook all night. And so I know some of the guys here are excited about that. So we're just going to make um, some pulled pork and pulled chicken and, and just relax and have a good time. But we do need some donations for, for some of those things. And we just ask that if you, do have, if you would like to give to that, if you would get with Judy, myself, or, or Bob, so that we can make that happen for you. And the last announcement I want to make is, obviously, it's Pastor Appreciation Month. And uh, I know our pastors aren't here today, so it's the perfect time to tell you that uh, would you pray about that and see where the Lord will lead you uh, as far as what you can do for our pastors this month. And uh, that'll be it. Let's stand to our feet this morning. I hope you've come with your hearts open. Are you ready to receive what the Lord has for you this morning? I know Pastor Walter has a wonderful message and we're excited to hear from him. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you. We thank you that you take us from glory to glory. We thank you that your mercies are new every morning. We thank you for your grace and your love, Father. And, and we thank you that you're here right now. And I know that there are many needs in this congregation and online, Father. And I just pray that you would be with those needs at this very moment, that you would bless each person 
that might be lifting that to you at this moment, Father. I pray that you would bless this service, Father. We want to hear from you this morning. We want to grow and know you more. And so I pray that you would bless this time, anoint the pastor, set him on fire, and may we have a heart of praise this morning. And may we bless your name. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 loves you. Blessed assurance Jesus is mine salvation purchase of God born of his spirit and washed
washed in his blood. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. It's a prayer from the Father over his people. 
So I want you to sing it out to him this morning. Sing it back to him. Sing it to the person in front of you. And just bless the person in front of you this morning.
whatever it is, whatever burden we have, I see some people that are just emotional out there this morning, and I know the Lord is present, and He wants to lift that from you this morning. So when we just take a moment, just call on the name of the Lord. Lord, would you bless those that are hurting this morning? Would you bless those that are just emotional because they're excited about what you're doing in their lives? They just want to praise you, Father, and give thanks to you for your goodness. in your minds and prepare yourself for worship. Do you know that blessing? Do you have it? Have you given it? Do you want to receive it? That is, that's a sermon and a song right there. Amen. All right, I'd like to uh, draw you to God's word. We're going to be reading from 2 Peter 2, 1 through 9. If you want to open your Bibles or your phone, I'm cheating. But there are also false false prophets among the people, just as there will be false teachers among you. They will secretly introduce destructive heresies, even denying the sovereign Lord who bought them, bringing swift destruction, destruction on themselves. Many will follow their depraved conduct and will bring the way of truth into disrepute. In their greed, these teachers will exploit you with fabricated stories. Their condemnation has long been hanging over them, and their destruction has not been sleeping. Does that not sound like today? For if God did not spare angels when they sinned, but sent them to hell, putting them in chains of darkness to be held for judgment, if he did not spare the ancient world when he brought the flood on its ungodly people, but protected Noah, a preacher of righteousness and seven others, If he condemned the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah by burning them to ashes and made them an example of what is going to happen to the ungodly, and if he rescued Lot, a righteous man, who was distressed by the depraved conduct of the lawless, for that righteous man living among them day after day was tormented in his righteous soul by the lawless deeds he saw and heard. If this is so, then the Lord knows how to rescue the godly from trials and to hold the unrighteousness for punishment on the day of judgment. What words we need to hear today. Let's pray before we go into worship. Lord, again, we thank you for bringing us to your house where we can gather of one heart and seek you. After a week of who knows what we all went through, everybody's got a different story, but it all ends up to be the same. We're nothing without you. We need you. We need all of you. We pray for Pastor Walter this morning that undoubtedly he's already filled with your spirit and the word will be delivered to us, the word we need to hear. We just pray that every heart 
will be open to hear it, to receive it, that our hearts will love you with all of our heart, our whole heart, our soul, our mind. And that when we leave here, a transformation will have taken place. That when we go out, we'll not only speak it, speak your name, speak what we heard, because it's good news, but we'll live it. Actions. We won't just preach it. We'll act it. Show it. We have to be real. And that we will go out and love our brothers and sisters as we love ourselves. And that's what you command us to do. That's all you want us to do. We just surrender our selfish selves to you and ask that you'll replace it with your will. And we look forward to hearing what you have for us today in Jesus' precious name. Amen. coming up here. Uh. I may be, maybe I'm getting myself in trouble by moving this out of here. But she prayed that we need to love each other and forgive each other. Isn't that what she said? So if I'm making myself in trouble, Agape me. Amen? Let's see if I can get that down with this here. <laughs> Greetings in the name of our Lord Jesus the Christ, the Father, and the Holy Spirit. Amen? I greet you all here and those who are following in the internet, you are a part of us, and it, it is as if you were here. And so, I, I thank God for you. And I pray that in the same way that we have our triune God blessing us, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, that he bless us in all that we are, spirit, soul, and body. And I pray for you who are watching and for you who are here that God bless you in that way. That he bless your bodies with health. That he provides for you everything that needs to sustain this physical body. That's what I pray. That our triune God bless this triune kind of a people. Blessing our bodies in the unique way that he can. I also pray that our triune God will bless our souls, that he will bless our souls with peace and joy, with the peace that comes by knowing in whom we have believed. Amen? That he is able, is he not? Yes, he is. So that if any here is going through a moment where you're, soul, your emotions are being challenged, I pray to God today, not only that he bless your bodies with health, but that he bless your souls with peace and joy. And I pray to God, our triune God, that he bless also our spirits with the knowledge unequivocally, and maybe I did not pronounce that properly, but you know what I mean. That we know that his presence is with us. From spirit, Holy Spirit, to the spirit of man. That we may sense his presence. And we know that he is here with us. And that we know he walks with us. So may he bless our bodies with health, our souls with joy and peace, and our spirits 
with the assurance of his presence with us. Amen? Amen. I need to do a commercial before I continue. Am I getting to look like Pastor Heather somehow? The commercial is this. God has and is using people with different talents to bless the community of believers here in Cincinnati. And he has uh, blessed us with TJ, who do a lot of car shows. He's having one this Saturday from 11 to 4. There are 68,403 cars. Am I, am I exaggerating a little bit here? I don't know. I know it's going to be a lot of cars. And I am just uh, bringing that uh, uh, commercial because the funds that are raised in that day are going to be given, donated to CCNAS for the youth program. And so I invite you to support. It is going to be at the Golf View Mall. You know what that is, right? Take 19, where dealers is. Not dealer, our dealer, but the store dealer. Uh, and so I'm going to be there, and I hope to see some of your faces in such a way that uh, the youth in this church will be provided with the finances they need for the ministry. Amen? Amen. Whomever is working with the slides, can you go back to the, the scripture reading? I don't know if I'm asking too much because I don't know. If you can, you can, and if you cannot, you cannot. Go back to, if you can, to the, okay. I, I have been preaching and teaching for at least 37, 38 years. And at times, every Sunday, when Martha and I were pastors in the church that the Lord appointed us, I preached two sermons every Sunday, and not the same sermon, because I had an English-speaking congregation, which their needs were different than our Spanish-speaking congregation, and the style of worship was different from each. Did I say better or worse? I said different, right? <laughs> different. And, and, and so I have, been, I have preached so many sermons in my life. I cannot count them, how many. And none of them have given me more challenge than this one. I, I put it together. I, I scratch it back. I put it together again, and I scratch it back. And I say, Holy Spirit, you need to lead me. You need to lead me. Because the theme we are going to talk here today is very important. Some lives are at stake to be either lost or saved. And we need to be careful whom we hear. Debbie, the internet, is the internet good or bad? It depends on how you use it. The internet is the internet. It doesn't think of its own. It has no personality. It depends on how you use it. Right now, the internet is being good because some people are watching us through the internet and being blessed. And yet, the internet as well, in the hands of the evil, could, be do, could do too much harm to our young people and to the people in the church of God. So I, I suggest that you be careful when you go to the internet and begin to look at different people who preach and teach. Some of them might be and are of the sound doctrine. And you will be blessed and you will be guided properly. Because they are people of God, anointed by God. And they will always tell the truth. I can tell you a David Jeremiah, for example. Ah. Uh, Who's the one that passed away recently? Huh? 
Charles Stanley, Chuck Swindle, and several others who are of sound doctrine. And they are in the internet. But that, that, that's not keeping mentioning names because you may be liable to mention a name that is not. And then you're going to be unbiased. But there are others, and I would not mention names, that are used by the enemy to deceive and confuse and bring people out of the truth. And they're in the same internet. And I am sure some of you or many of you have heard of these people. They are charismatic. They, they, they present and project themselves as people who know and are in the truth. But they are not. And I know that they are not because of their teachings not being in tune with the Word of God. And I challenge you, if you ever go to the internet and hear a preacher, do not be impressed by the charismatic way they preach. But I suggest that you confirm and test what they say with the word of God to see if they match or not. These people are good um, motivational speakers. I mean, they really impress. They, they say things that make sense. And I have no problem with motivational speakers. Believe me, you, I don't. Sometimes we need to hear these people. But to confuse and to mix motivational speaking and the gospel is completely, totally wrong. I came to Pastor Ed's office last week and I confronted him by what he did to me today. He was preaching about God helps those who help themselves, right? That's an easy sermon to preach. But the one I'm talking today may touch some fibers in you. This is my prayer. Please understand. I'm a man of God. And I have to be faithful to my Lord. Please don't take any words that I say today, if it applies to you, if you find yourself in that situation, following false teachers, please don't, don't take that against me. I did not write the word of God, did I? I am just a messenger. Don't take it to the messenger. Take it with God. Take it with God. And that's the right place to take it. You know why? Because then God, the Holy Spirit, will bring you to conviction. I cannot do that. I can only preach the message. But I cannot bring anybody to conviction. I'm not the Holy Spirit. But the Holy Spirit can use these words to bring conviction in you. And perhaps you will have to painfully enough Stop listening to people like that. And I'm going to talk about the danger where they are found, what they do, and what is the advice of God for us. And I pray again to the Holy Spirit to touch us, to lead us. What good would it be if you follow a false teacher and find yourself in hell hoping to be in heaven. Jackie, where are you from, sweetheart? From Indiana, right? How long have you been living in Florida? Many, 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 many moons. Jackie, if I tell you that I want to go to Walt Disney. How are you going to direct me to get there? What would you say? Huh? 
Pray first. That, that's good. That's good. So that you don't have an accident or anything like that. Yeah, pray first. But how would you give me directions to get there? What? Go across 50. And then from there on, make a left here, make a right there. And all of a sudden, you will see the mouse. But if you are not from Florida, let's say you come from Argentina. Have you, and you have no clue of the geography of the United States of America. You have no clue. You don't know where New York is. You don't know where Florida is. You don't know where Idaho is. You only know where Minnesota is because you talk to Anita. <laughs> other than that, you don't know any other place in the United States of America. And so you come with your family wanting to go to Walt Disney. And so you arrived at the airport in Tampa, let's say. And from Tampa, you look at somebody and say, hey, I'm going to Disney World with my family. How do I get there? If the person is a Christian, they will say, you pray first. <laughs> but if not, person will tell you, okay, this is what you do. Make sure you follow 95 North. <laughs> You're laughing, right? Follow 95 North all the way, about 1,000 miles, and you are ending up in Disney World. Well, this Argentinian, I have to get down. I, I, I hope that you can still see me. Uh, old people, you have to do it this way. When I was 17, I just jumped. So this Argentinian had no idea. So he take his rented car, right? And begin to drive 95 north, 95 north, 95 north. Will he ever get to Disney World? The only way is if he goes all around the globe and come back <laughs> to Florida, right? And that's not going to happen. So this person, in his or her ignorance, follow the advice of someone that because of their own ignorance or by malice brought them to the wrong place. And this is what happens with these false teachers and prophets. They will guide you making sense of what they say, but at the end of the day, they go to hell and those who are following them will fall in the same place. And that's how important this message is. And that's how it was so difficult for me to put it together. And I pray to God, the Holy Spirit, to just use me. And I pray to God, the Holy Spirit, to touch your heart and listen without any prejudice. Do you hear me? Listen to it without any prejudice. Listen to me. Bring out anything that you think about these people. Put it aside and just listen. Do not argue with me in your mind as I'm talking. That happens, right? The preacher is talking and here in your mind you say, oh, it's wrong. Because <laughs> you have your own thoughts. <laughs> I don't agree with that. Please, don't do that to yourself. Right, right? <laughs> Did you hear what I said? Don't do that to yourself. Just listen with a blank page. And then after this service is finished, then you make a choice. If you're going to follow the false teachers or you're going to follow the truth. If you're going to follow those who manipulate you, or you are going to follow the one who sacrificed for you. Is that making sense? Then I have to take a minute to go all the way back again. And here. Now, it, okay, it's there as well. I'm going to read here for a minute. But there will also 
false prophets. What kind of prophets? False prophets among the people. So in the past, this is nothing new. This is nothing that happens in the New Testament era. Alison, this is coming way back in the Old Testament. Prophets that were false prophets that came to talk about what the people wanted to hear and not what God wanted to say. Because Donna, you know what? Sometimes what God wants to tell you and I and us hurts. Hurts. It's not what we want to hear. But we need to hear it and suffer it and be transformed. So there were prophets that wanted to tell the people what they wanted to hear so that they are comfortable. If you're a true Christian, there will be times in your life that you are not going to be comfortable because the Holy Spirit is transforming you. Amen? And nobody likes to be transformed. We think we are okay the way we are. That we are the last frozen coke in the desert. And we are not. And we are not. And so God needs to transform us. He has to do soul and spirit surgery. And no surgery is without pain, is it? I told my wife one time, if I ever get cancer, I will never take chemotherapy. That's what I told her, stupid as I was. Now I have cancer, and guess what? I'm taking chemotherapy. Do I like the chemotherapy? Not at all. But it's necessary for my health. Am I making sense, dear friends? He says, there, there were false prophets in the past. Nothing new. Just as there will be false what? False what? Teachers. False teachers who will come with their deceitful ways to move you away from the truth. And this is not the word of Walter, is it? As a matter of fact, that is not even the word of Peter. Do we say, let's read the word of Peter? Is that what we read this morning? No, we read what? The word of God. Peter was only the person that God used to write down and put it down, but this is not the word of Peter. I couldn't care less about the word of Peter. If I were reading the word of Peter, that was only an opinion. And his opinion is as good as mine. And Peter, you're telling me that I need to be careful about that? That's your opinion. My opinion is I'm going to follow these people. It's not opinion against opinion. It's the word of God. Of the sovereign God. Who loves you and I. So much he gave his only begotten son. So that whoever believes in him. Whosoever believes in him will never what? Perish, but have what? Everlasting life. That's a word of God. Let's take it as such. That's not the opinion of Peter. Amen? So he says there will be false teachers where? See, these false teachers are not coming from Islamism, from, from, the, from the teachings of Islam. They are not of us, are they? They are outside of Christendom. This is not the teachings of Buddha. They are outside of us, right? Not the danger with these people is that they are sitting with you and I and they claim to be like you and I. And they disguise themselves to make look like you and I. But they are not. Let me look here. Matthew 7.15. Give me one second. Matthew 7.15. You can look it in your own 
Bible. Da, da, de, de, da, da. Okay. Matthew 7, 15. Watch out. This is from the mouth of Jesus. You know the red letters? This is from the red letters. This is the advice of your Savior and mine who came to die that you and I may have salvation. And this is what he says. This is not even the words of somebody interpreting. No, this came from the mouth of Jesus. Watch out for false prophets. They come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ferocious wolves. They look like you and I in the pen. You know what I'm saying? Like every other sheep. But inside they are ferocious wolves. And what is it that the wolves do to the sheep? Kill it and eat it. And they want to eat your heart. And they want to eat your soul. They want to eat your spirit. They come to us, these guys, like if they were part of Christendom, but they are not. I don't know if you know the story of the Trojan horse. It is this, this battle, and, 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 and it was a big wall. And the enemy was not able to enter the wall or defeat the wall. And, and many of the people were killed. And the people in the town, in the city, were protected by that wall. And they couldn't turn it down. So this is what they came about. Clever idea. They built a big, huge horse. Big, huge horse. And they brought the horse to the entrance to the gate of the city. And they say to the people inside the city, hey, this is a trophy that we bring to you because you defeat us. We accept our defeat. Please accept our trophy. So they brought the horse inside the city, closed the doors, and began to celebrate the victory. And they were dancing around the horse and drinking around the horse. And it was a big party. And they drank. And they got drunk. And they were all laying down drunk. Inside the horse was an army of the enemy. And they came out of the horse and killed them all. And these false prophets are Trojan horses of Satan that he sent to us, and many times they be, become friends of us. Many times we hear them in the internet and we trust them. But what you don't know is that they come with false teachings to kill you and to deceive you. They disguise themselves. And the Lord says, watch out for them. Keep an eye. Be alert. So you don't fall to their, can I bring this up? I think that's better. Amen? We need to be watchful to whom we believe. Matthew 24, if you want to follow, just you can do that. Matthew 24 and verse 11. Let me, let me begin reading a little bit here. Let me begin in verse 10. Matthew 24, 10. At that time, many will turn away from the faith and will betray and hate each other. Can you hear that? And many false prophets will appear to do what? To deceive. And many false prophets will, prophets will show. Many false teachers will show up among Sisina. 
either by the internet, not the people in the internet, but you know what I'm talking about, YouTube, and in that way come to the fishing app. Because if one of you follow them, they have come to Swissing Now. And they come, they have only one purpose. Friends, and that purpose is to deceive. To deceive. Am I saying that? This is the word of who? Not Matthew. This is the word of God. Jeremiah 14. Jeremiah 14. Somebody took Jeremiah from my Bible, bring it back. Jeremiah 14. I'm sorry, Jeremiah 14, verse 14. Jeremiah 14, verse 14. Listen to this carefully. Because this is not the word of Jeremiah, is it? This is the word of God. Keep that in mind, friends. This is the word of God. And let's see what God speaks about these people. Then the Lord said to me, so he's talking about the words of God, right? The prophets are prophesying what? Lies in my name. They are prophesying what? Lies in my name. They say that they come in my name, but they are not coming in my name because they are prophesying lies in my name. I have not sent them or appointed them or spoken to them. They are prophesying to you false visions, divinations, idolatries, and the delusions of their own mind. Wow. These are not people anointed by God. I mean, I, I ask you this. I ask you this. I, I always try to uh, get in the nerves of the people who sit in the back. Because if you think that sitting in the back, you are going to be far away from me so that I don't bother you. Uh, wrong. I like the people in the front because they are courageous. If you sit in the back, I'm going to point at you. These prophets are prophesying lies. Let me ask you this, Larry. Is it possible that these prophets are anointed ones of God? Yes? Okay. Debbie, do you think that these people who are prophesying lies are anointed by God? Certainly not. How could God anoint a liar? You tell me. How can God anoint a liar to go to his people and preach false teachings? That doesn't make sense. They are not the anointed of God. As a matter of fact, we will see they are the curse of God. So not everybody has come and preached are anointed by God. If they're going to preach lies, God does not appoint li uh, anoint liars. And God exposed them for what they were. Is it, is it making sense, friends? There is a movement. There is a movement. A cancer. You know what a cancer is, right? It eats you little by little. It eats you. You don't feel it, it will eat you to death. There's a cancer that comes inside the church of God as we saw. They are among us to deceive us. And then, then it's called, you see, they will secretly, are you following me there? They will openly, no. They come secretly like the spies. They will secretly introduce what? Destructive heresies. Destructive. 
destructive heresies because the purpose that they have is to destroy the people of God. That's what Satan has been doing since Genesis 1. In, in Genesis 3, he came to Eve and told Eve a false teaching. Remember that? Some of you were there. You're old enough to be a I mean, yeah. So if I say something that is not accurate, you just raise your hand and say, I was there, and this is the way it happened. So the Lord told them, right, do not eat. You can eat from every fruit, any tree, but not that one. Because if you eat from that one, you will probably die. Is that what the Lord said? Huh? You will what? Surely, not probably, you will surely die. Bam, and there is Eve in the garden. And Satan, in the person of that snake, came and said to her, Oh, the Lord told you that you shouldn't eat from any tree. She says, no, 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 no. She, see, she fell into the manipulation of Satan. She says, no, he didn't say that I cannot eat from every tree. He only said, I cannot eat from that tree. Because he said that if I eat from that tree, I may die. Is that what the Lord said to them? It's not that I may die, is what? That I will surely die. And you know what Satan did? This is always his way. He's the great deceiver. The father of all lies. That's how my father described him. And he said to Eve, ah, forget about this. You, you're not going to die. Pat, you were there. Tell us what he said. Or you will not? He said, you will not die. He knows. See the lie? He knows that if you eat from that tree, you will become a god like him. Oh. He shut up. And then in Eve's mind, destruction and deceiveness take over. Satan did not move her, push her, or gave the fruit for her. She did it on her own. She could not blame Satan for what she did. Like you and I cannot blame Satan when we sin. Because Satan cannot make us sin. He cannot make us. He doesn't have the authority of God to make us sin. We sin because we choose to do it. So I cannot blame Satan for all the rotten life that I lived before. I can blame only myself to not hit myself too hard. That is his way. To lie and to discredit God. They come to introduce secretly this Destructive heresies. Let me tell you the destructive, destructive heresy that I'm going to be talking about today. There is a movement called the prosperity gospel. Have you ever heard of that? Called the prosperity gospel, which is also known as the word of faith. Have you ever heard of that? The word of faith. The word of health, the word of wealth. And what these people, let me, let me go down again. Jamie, you should be here helping me. Come on, Pastor. Thank you. We don't want you to be with be, be, be yourself useful. <laughs> this, this is how it goes. And of course, I cannot go in depth about this false gospel. If anyone is interested in knowing more about that, please let, let Pastor Ed or Pastor Barb or myself know, and I'll be more than happy to take one evening with you and go deeper into what this is, but I cannot do that here. But 
Basically, this is the way it works. Salvation, to them, is a contract made between God and you. It's a contract. And in a contract, each side has a certain responsibility and duties. So far, so good? And so they think and teach that you can, in that contract, force God or, or ask God to comply with his part of the contract by doing what you want. Do you hear me? It's a contract. Both of us at the same level. A contract that you and I at the same level. My part is to have faith in you. To trust you. That's my part of the contract. Your part of the contract is to satisfy, satisfy everything that I need you. That I ask of you. That, that, that's the way they see it. And so they believe, Julie. Oh, sorry. They believe. Why don't you sit closer so I don't have to? No, no. I'm not. <laughs> they believe that if you claim something allowed, God is under the responsibility of making it happen. That is why it's called word of faith. So you say, I'm going to be cured, or my son is going to have a job, and you say it enough and allowed, somehow that's going to happen. You know what the problem with that is? Is that you're putting this yourself in the same position of divinity as God, that you can, by your own self, make things happen. And the only one that makes things happen is God. <coughs> I need to say this. Your faith and mine do not force the hand of God to meet or to, or to comply, it should be, to comply with my prayer. Is this sin? Your name? So? What? Huh? So? Scott, it was close. It started with S, but it's not. <laughs> so, Scott, some people think that faith forces the hand of God to do what we ask Him to do. So far from the truth. Let me ask you this question Do you believe that Billy Graham, you know who he is, right? Or who he was? What's your name, sir? Chris, Chris, do you believe that Billy Graham was a man of faith or not? Right? He was a man of faith. Right? He lived according to the word of God. And where is he now? He's dead. He's with the Lord. Do you think that Billy Graham and his family pray for his healing? So why did he die? Was it that they did not have enough faith? Listen, I know as a fact, I know as a fact that many people here were praying for me. I know that as a fact. That many people were earnestly praying for me. What's your name, sir? Art? And guess what? I have cancer. Did they not have enough faith? Of course they did. But your faith and mine do not force the Lord to do what I want. He always do his will, not my will. Chris, do you think that Jesus had faith? Absolutely right. If anybody had faith, that was Jesus. And Ray, you know what happened to him, right? He went to this garden. Dinah, with all the faith in the world, nobody have more faith than Jesus. And he kneeled down. And he asked, oh, Father, if it is possible, let this cup be removed from me. 
How many times did he pray that? Three times. Three times. Do you think he had faith when he prayed that? Of course he did. And guess what happened to him? He died at the cross. Why? Because it was not his will. It was the will of God. And he will always respond according to his will, not yours. And that's why Jesus says, but not my will, your will be done. What time? Okay, so I have until one. Uh, <laughs> why are you laughing? <laughs> God will always respond according to his will. Some people use this portion of the scripture. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. Yeah. If it is his will. If it is according to his will. If it is not according to his will, he's not going to do it. So faith do not force the hand of God to comply with my petition. He may or he may not according to what? To his will, not mine. Is that clear? But, Jamie, when I come down, you, you help me. But these people in this false gospel believe that their faith forced the hand of God because it's a contract. You see, I have faith and you provide. That's not the way it works. How about wealth? I talk a little bit about faith and I spoke a little bit about uh, health using Billy Graham as an example. How about wealth? These people think that if you say to God, I'm going to have money, I'm going to have this car, I'm going to have this house, and you say it aloud, and aloud enough, and, 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 and long enough, the Lord will give you the wealth that you're asking for. Angela, it doesn't work that way, does it? What is it that the Lord said to the people who were following him? If you come after me, you need to what? To deny yourself. Pick up the cross and then follow me. You have to deny yourself. Some were trying to follow Jesus. They said, I don't even have a house. I don't even have a pillow to put my head on. If the gospel was about wealth, Jesus would have born in the greatest palace ever. But it is not about wealth. It is not about health. It is not necessarily about faith. It is about surrendering yourself to God, to his will. Amen? So don't let anybody teach you anything different. Don't let. And if you have been led by these people, it is time for you to seek closer what the Lord said. Make a choice. Are you going to follow them? Are you going to give credit to them? Or are you going to give credit to the Lord? One of these preachers, one of these preachers, several years ago, he was one of these prosperity gospel preachers and, and say, Plant a seed. Have you ever heard that? Plant a seed. And the Lord will. And so on and so forth. Well, for whatever reason, whether from the Holy Spirit or by pressure, he came to national TV and he said, I was wrong all the time. God does not sell his blessing. I repent of having preached to you this prosperity gospel. I am never going to do that again. I'm going to preach the true gospel from now on. Guess what? Four to six months after that, he was back preaching the prosperity gospel. And these people have their temples filled. Thousands in each meeting meet there. 
to listen to the garbage that these people utter. And I say garbage because my Lord told me they are not my people. They are not my anointing. Because what they are doing is discrediting my gospel. They are people of Satan. But they have their temples filled. They have two and three meetings. And thousands of people go to each meeting of those. I am so sorry. My heart burns to see how many are deceived by these people. Please, you never allow Satan to deceive you. Can you move it to the next portion, please? In their greed. In their what? James. Don't worry, I'll give you a tip at the end. Thank you. Praise God. Listen, they are motivated by what? By greed. By greed. Somehow there's always a way for you to give. And sometimes they even ask you, to get into your credit card and spend money. They do. They do. They have airplanes private. Mansions that you and I will never, ever dream of having. And my Lord came humble, did he not? To the manger. Right? And they acquire all this wealth and live on the Ignorance of those who support them. And you send the money. Let me ask you this. Why should I have a 25 million mansion, a private jet, when the world needs missionaries to go and preach the gospel? You tell me that. Should I not use that money to support the ministry here and abroad? I guess my Lord vomit when he sees that. And if he doesn't, I do. Asking people for money to keep it. Sell that house and give it to the church that there might be the expansion of the gospel. Oh no. There was one of them that had a house for his dog. You know who I'm talking about. Don't say the name. I don't want to say names. I made a promise to somebody that I love so dearly that I will never mention the name. At least not in front of her. I will not. But there was one who built a house for his dog that, that, that was about bigger than the sheds that we buy in, in, in home business. Be, with air conditioning. With air conditioning. And I remember when I came to this country originally, they were very uh, popular. Very popular. And I remember her asking the people to give for the missions and to give for this and to give for that. And, and she had diamonds bracelets and all that garbage. And I say, why don't you sell that and give it yourself? Oh, no. Friends, they are motivated by greed. And what they do in their greed, these teachers will what? Exploit you. Take advantage of you. Manipulate you so that you somehow either feel that this is right or feel guilty. And here's the most part. And here is the most part. If you follow them, you will never get to the mouse, if you know what I mean. If you follow them, you will never get to Disney World. If you follow them, you will never get to heaven. will never get to heaven.
I'll finish with this. I have a lot more to say, but I, time is short. They fabricate stories to manipulate you. See that? But look at this verse now, this part of the verse. Their what? Their reward. Their, 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 their hugging from the Jesus to them. What is it that it says? Their what? Their condemnation. Their condemnation is ready for them and to those who follow them. Remember the story of the pigs where the Lord took these demons out of man and they said, don't let me without a body. And there were, I don't know how many, hundreds of pigs and that. They, they Send us to the pigs. Okay, I'll send you to the pigs. What did the pigs do? They jump over the cliff. No one. They all follow the next guy in front. They were all killed. And if you follow these false teachers, they go down the cliff and you will go down the cliff with them. I'll finish with this. Colossians chapter 2. Colossians, where are you here? Chapter 2. This is the advice of God for you and I. For any of his children. They know they are at danger. So he gave us some advice to his kids. Like you will give advice to your kids, right? Because you know sometimes... Our kids make decisions that are not necessarily mature enough. And as a good parent, you try to help them and give them advice. I mentioned at the Sunday school that I have one of my grandkids who's lost. Lost. I love her to death, but she's lost. She left the faith. She sang at the choir. She was serving God so beautifully. And then she went to the culture of the world. And the culture of the world deceived her. And she has made a very, unfortunately, bad, bad move. I mean, she's not in drugs and things like that. But she made a bad move. Because every time you leave Jesus and your faith to go to the world, you're making a bad choice. So there was an article of this guy, I guess about in his 20s, early 20s, who happened to drive his truck through the wall of the Ace uh, hardware store on Spring Hill Drive. And he stole some guns and ammunition and other stuff and money. He left. Certainly police found him, arrested him. And as I was reading that that, uh, article, I say to myself, was that kid, when he came out of the womb of his man, was he born to become a criminal? Was his destiny was to become a criminal? I don't think so. That kid was born like everybody else. He could have done in the power of God, to be somebody. But as I continued to read the article, I read that he began to hang out with the wrong crowd. And the wrong crowd were stealing from different places. And then the wrong crowd became to use drugs. And then he was hooked with drugs. And he needed enough money to sustain his addiction. And that's why he did that. And I'm sending this to my granddaughter to say to her, and to all of them, say, your choices have a consequence, for good or bad. If you choose Jesus and live under his care and guidance, your reward is good, is it not? But if you choose to go with the wrong crowd, then there is also an expectancy of doom. 
how many kids that were born today are addicts so much. They were not born for that. They make wrong choices in their life. And I say to you, make the right choice. See what the Lord says. See to it that no one takes you what? Colossians 2.8. See to it that no one takes you captive, a prisoner, using hollow and deceptive philosophy, which depends on what? Human tradition and the elemental spiritual forces of this world, not of him. Not of him. So this is what Jehovah, our almighty, loving, caring God, is telling us. Be careful that these people do not deceive you because they use words that are high of their own. Amen? Jeremiah 23. Somebody took it away. Let it go. Jeremiah 23. And let's read verse 16. Jeremiah 3.16. This is what Jeremiah says, right? This is not the word of Jeremiah. This is what the Lord, this is what Jehovah Almighty says. Do not listen to to what the prophets are prophesying to you. Do not listen to these teachers, what they are teaching you. They fill you with what? False hopes. False hopes. They speak visions from their own minds, not from the mouth of the Lord. Never been in a church, in a congregation. James. Thank you. Thank you so much. Never, ever, even, even when I was a pastor, and we had a lot of opportunities, but in this particular congregation, besides the Sunday services, which I hope is challenging your mind, as it is challenging mine. There are three Bible studies. No one. Three of them. There's one on Wednesdays at 7 p.m. There's one on Thursdays. Two of them. What time? Th that time. Okay? Two of them on Thursday. And then another one on Friday. And these are people, listen, these are people of God. So if you end up in hell, I need to tell you, you have only one person to be blamed for, and that's you. That's you. Because you did not take advantage. Because there's no way that you can know what deceive is if you don't know the truth, right? In order for me to know you are lying to me, I need to know the truth. And that is what God is saying. Please come to know the truth. How do you know the truth? By the teaching. The sound teaching. The sound teaching. Besides that, there is the men's breakfast. And other opportunities that God gives through this congregation so that you come to know the truth. Because the word of God says, if you know the truth, the truth will make you what? Free from deceiveness. Free from all these manipulative ways of these people. If you know the truth, you are free. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Praise God. So the next step, and I don't know where the thing is, but this is the next step. I suggest, in the name of God, that you, oh, thank you, to confirm 
any teaching against the scripture within the context. This is the next step. Anytime that you hear somebody through the internet or a friend of yours, I'm not saying that you say that's false, don't, but you go home and you confirm that what you were taught, confirm it against the scripture within the context. What's your name, sir? Bobby. Bobby. I was an alcoholic. Really bad. I drank whiskey and beer like it was, it was going to stop in the world. The Amazon was not enough of, of whiskey and beer for me to be satisfied. To the point of almost losing my family, destroying myself and them. That's the way I was. So three friends of mine, Bobby, came to my house with good intentions, right? Came to my house to talk to me. Hey, hey, Walter, you know what? You need to stop drinking. Look what you're doing to yourself. Look what you're doing to your family. Not only was I being destroyed economically because I was using all my money for that, but my dignity was being stepped on. I lost my dignity. And they came to me in good faith, and they said, you know what, Walter? You need to stop drinking. You need to do something about this. And I heard them. When they stopped talking, encouraging me to stop, I said to them, but you know what? God wants me to drink. What? And so I took a text from 2 Timothy, I think it is, I don't know if it is 2 or 1 Timothy. I know it's chapter, it's verse 23, where Paul tells Timothy, keep drinking wine. You see, the Lord says, keep drinking wine. But that's what I'm doing, I'm following God. Oh, but I was taking that verse out of what? Context. If I put it in the context, it was not for me to use it to justify my drinking. And what I say, go and, and, and confirm the teaching with the word. If it matches, take it. If it doesn't, get rid of it, of it as quickly as you would be taking something like, like, a, like a venomous snake out of your way. Throw it out. Friends, I, I thank you for listening to me. I thank God and Pastor Ed and Pastor Bob to give me this opportunity to bring his word to you and to me. My prayer again is, may the Holy Spirit guide you. Please be in the truth. Please confirm your teaching in the word of God. Father God, thank you for your goodness and your mercy. And as we continue to worship you this morning, may your Holy Spirit take over now and forevermore. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. And after the song of the worship team, this is the first Sunday of the month, so we are going to have communion. And if you would like to partake of that, then stay after they sing. Amen? Yes, ma'am. I do whatever you say. Your, your husband always told me, follow, follow what she says. So, uh, will I dare to do something different? No. What is it that you want me to do? They're coming. Okay. Sure. Let's do that. Then. Yes. Okay. Good. So the helpers, come up and get ready. My beloved wife, in whom I am well pleased. You come.
Self to 
May the Holy Spirit of God guide us to the truth, guide us to heaven, to worship you face to face. Let this be our blessing today, that you are with us and that we are with you. Go in peace and be blessed. In the name of Jesus, amen.